Yeah, Harvey Gant is a civil rights icon here in Charlotte and across the Carolinas, but uh, this isn't a story about Gant's political leadership or his professional success as an architect, or even this uh, Center for African American Arts and Culture named in his honor. This is Harvey Gant's personal story in his own words. I grew up in Charleston, but I actually was born in a place called Adams Run. Adams Run, South Carolina. We got raised by a village of folks, uh, watched us play marbles in the front yard and hopscotch for my sisters. And Harvey Gant reminisces here at Central Piedmont Community College about the early days, long before his family's civil rights fight to enroll him at Clemson. Hey, uh, how did your father feel about it? Uh, he was always for me, 100% before winning election as Charlotte's first black mayor and becoming a role model for future mayors. Harvey could listen to 11 different opinions and at the end of it, he could make everybody feel like the decision was theirs. And that is truly an art. Good evening, fellow Democrats. For politics brought Gantt and Charlotte to the brighter lights of a national audience. Their work and their ideals inspire us every day. As we drive into Charleston across the magnificent double span of the Cooper River Bridge. What also inspires Gant today are those early days, growing up in Charleston, first near his dad's job at the Naval Yards, north of town. Uh, our first experience was public housing, uh, like a lot of people back then, so I got the benefit of living, the benefit of living in public housing. And, uh, and actually, that experience was not a negative one for me, as I so often hear. And then later, during the 50s and 60s, Gant talks of his teen years in Charleston proper. You can let your driver take you down Palmetto-lined East Battery with its palatial homes and gardens. But not living in these mostly white touristy sections of town that you see in the old South Carolina travel films. It's a single family house in a salt of the earth, working class neighborhood of people who were doing the best to make ends meet. But we also observed some indignities that my parents experienced. They couldn't try on the clothes in the department store like white people could. And uh, we started asking questions about that. What they did explain was these were obstacles to be overcome eventually, and that they expected with our education that we would overcome. We shall overcome. Gant's questions about segregation in Charleston as a child led to activism in his teen years. At All Black Burke High School, Gant joined other students in a lunch counter sit-in at the downtown Crest store. And we decided to do it. We just decided to do it. And then we did it and uh, got arrested. And, by the way, we didn't tell our parents that we were doing it. For one of them, not that they would have, been, would have frowned upon us doing it, but they were fearful of what that might mean. You're going to get arrested might not be able to get into the college that you applied for. And remember, the priority in my family and a lot of other families is you are going to school. And you're going to get an education. Someday. Gant reminds this college audience at Central Piedmont that his college years began not at Clemson, but as a freshman at Iowa State. This guidance counselor said to me, you like challenges? Why don't you accept the challenge of going to a predominantly white institution? I went to Iowa State, had a good experience, met very fine teachers, professors. Uh, the kids in Iowa were wonderful. They hadn't seen a lot of black people there. I felt I was getting an education there, understanding the people there. But you know what? It got too cold in Iowa. I really was a child of the South. But Gant found out quickly that Clemson in the early 60s could be a cold place too. I applied five times 
And each time there was some new rule, some new thing. Until finally came the ruling in a lawsuit filed by Gant's father that Gant and other qualified black students are entitled to what the court called freedom from racially discriminatory policies, changing Clemson and eventually all South Carolina colleges forever. I got in in January of 1963. Clemson was, was, was a wonderful experience. Uh, to this day, I, I relish that experience. But people also said to me, you're going to be lonely and isolated there. And they didn't want you there in the first place. And they professed not to want you. And the cameras left town, and news people left, and <laughs> I, uh, I was hungry. And when I got in the line at the cafeteria, there were nothing but black faces on the other side of the line serving the food and the smiles that came from them was priceless they could probably imagine their child their niece their nephew their somebody what they might also serve one day who's going to get that education and it made all the difference in the world We hope you enjoyed the story. If you don't want to miss any more great stories about the Charlotte region, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.